Hello students. Welcome back to SST class. Let's continue our chapter 9, Earth's Four Spheres. In this chapter, we have learned about hydrosphere and atmosphere. Today, we shall learn about lithosphere. Lithosphere. Now, lithosphere means land. The uppermost solid layer of the earth is called lithosphere. So, earth has got three layers. Crushed, mantle and core. The uppermost layer is crushed. Middle one is your mantle. And in the last one is your core. So, the uppermost layer is also called as your lithosphere, land or crushed. Okay, it is formed of rocks and soil. So, the first layer of the earth is made up of soil and rocks. Out of the total area of the lithosphere, about 71% consists of ocean flow which lies under water. So, whatever lithosphere we have on the earth, 71% of the lithosphere is under ocean ocean floor that is 71 percent total of lithosphere remaining 29 percent consists of land masses which rise above the surface of water in the previous chapter also we had learned 71 percent is water and 29 percent is the land so, 29% of the land mass which we can see rising above the surface of the water and 71% of the land is consists of the ocean flow which is under water. Now, the highest point on the lithosphere on the land, the highest point is Mount Everest. How much is the height? 8,800 48 meter above the sea level and on the other hand the greatest depth the depth on the land is Mariana Trench okay which is in the Pacific Ocean which is 10,900 do you remember we had learned this in the previous chapter when you were learning about the continents and ocean we learned in Asian continent Mount Everest's highest and when we were learning about the oceans, we had learned the deepest trench, Mariana Trench. So in lithosphere, highest point is Mount Everest and deepest point is Mariana Trench. Okay. The lithosphere is divided into three layers. The crushed, mantle and core, which you can see in the picture also. The crust is the thinnest layer of the earth. So, the crust is first layer and very fine layer. After the crust, we have mantle. Mantle is middle layer and is thicker than the first layer which is your crust. And the second layer, mantle, can be found below the continents that means under the oceans. So, as you go deeper into the earth, as, as you go after the crust to the mantle, from mantle to core, the temperature and the pressure will increase with the depth. As you go deeper and deeper, the temperature and pressure will increase. So, the temperature and pressure is less on crust. As you go to the mantle, it increases more. And if you reach to the core, it is the highest. The innermost layer of the earth is called core. So, the last layer is your core. The core is divided into two parts. Outer core and inner core. Outer core is in liquid state while the inner core is in solid. So, outer core is in liquid state and if we go to the last one, inner core, it is in the solid Form. Presence of all mineral resources on the lithosphere makes it a very important part of our 
environment. So all the mineral resources on lithosphere makes it very very important part of our environment. So lithosphere is very important because we get a lot of minerals from it. Now we have biosphere. Biosphere is very narrow sphere of earth which contains life. So biosphere means a zone or a sphere of earth which contains life. It, this sphere includes those parts of atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere where life exists. So wherever there is life whether it is air or water or land that will be your biosphere. So these three elements air, land and water are very very essential for life to exist. If we need to have life, we need to have air also, water also and land also. If any of it is not there, then life will not be possible. So each living organism, so anything which is living, whether it is a plant or any animal or a human being that has life, has a specific environment in which it exists. So plants have their own environment to live, animal lives in their own environment, human has a specific environment to live. So they have their particular environment in which they live and they interact with each other. So each organism has a specific environment to live and there they interact with different components. It is called ecosystem. Okay. So thus we can say that an environment can be divided into two main components. A biotic component and biotic component. So biosphere is wherever living things live and Land, water and air are very necessary for life to survive and each organism has its own specific environment to live where it interacts with the other components. So, environment can be divided into two abiotic and biotic components. Abiotic components are non-living things like you have air, water, land, soil, rocks, mineral, sun, light. And many more things. And biotic means things which have, which have life or which are living things. Like we have humans, we are animals, plants. We all are biotic. Biotic components of environment cannot survive without a biotic components. So we cannot survive with, without each other. So biotic ones like human beings, animals and plants are totally dependent on a biotic component. We need water, land, soil, rock, mineral, sunlight, sun and without this abiotic component the plants, animals and human beings cannot survive. So we are interdependent on these components. So this is how your chapter is completed and today I am giving you question answers also. Thank you.